I went shopping at Menards and I brought back some countertop samples. Ta-da! So I'm gonna try something that I really haven't seen anyone do. I'm sure they have, but I'm going to be painting on countertop samples. I'm not sure how it's going to work out because they are a little bit smooth. It should be okay. I'm gonna try some Posca paint pens as well as regular acrylic paint with a brush. I'm going to be creating six fairly tiny paintings. They're mini canvases that aren't actually canvases. Anything can be a canvas, right? The first one I'm painting is called Dark Bro Bro <laughs> I think this is supposed to be Bordeaux. Typo. They might want to change that. I don't really know what I'm doing here, so I'm just drawing a random blob and we'll turn it into something. definitely could flake off if I wanted, but when I run my finger along it, it stays. So I'm just gonna do all of them and hope for the best, just for fun. Using this bar countertop as a filming background for this countertop sample is actually so pretty and aesthetically pleasing. However, it is so difficult to color correct for a black background. So I'm gonna switch to this not as aesthetic white poster board. I added a tail after I decided that this is going to turn into a bird. Before then, I had no idea what it was going to be. I am trying now to cover the entire body with a second layer of this turquoise color, but it ended up pulling the original layer off and then I could see the countertop sample through. Not good, so I tried as best as I could to just fill in as much as I could and this is what it's going to have to look like. Nothing more I can really do, so I'm going to move on to the little feetsies. They're so cute, but I thought that the placement of the bird was a little bit close to the bottom to look natural, so I went ahead and added a branch and that made it look a lot better in my opinion. I think the biggest charm about using these countertop samples is that all of them have such a unique pattern. Because of this, I don't want to fill in the entire background. Snowflakes are small enough to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of action to this image. And I thought this was very fitting because it is super cold out and we have gotten some snow here in Ohio. Not much, but we have. Finishing touches after everything was dry, I went ahead and added a black outline around everything. And I think that this makes it really pop against the dark brown background. One down, five to go. And I changed because it's time to hit the bike. Painting number two, this idea is so simple. It's a very abstract piece. Even though it is a simple idea, it actually took quite a while with the Posca paint pens. These are definitely not that easy to draw on countertop samples with. So for the remaining four paintings, I'm going to be using acrylic paint and a paintbrush. I enjoyed those a lot more than these, but I'm gonna still continue this one and finish it. The light purple Posca, it did not show up as opaque as I wanted it to and as you saw with the first painting, layering these on the countertop sample is not very easy. So I had to work at this one to get the opacity to build and not show as much of the pattern through. It was kind of a pain in the butt to be honest, <laughs> but definitely worth the effort for how cool it ends up looking in the end. Groovy. What in the world? That's an interruption and a half. It's looking groovy. I decided to do three sections of three colors each. Of 
cool colors, warm colors, and greens, which I guess are both cool and warm. Different shades, you know? After the initial wavy lines, I went ahead and added some drips to the orange and also to the purple. I think it helped the overall composition to be a little bit more interesting and then I went ahead and after everything was completely dry, again, make sure it's dry or the Poscas could bleed together and ruin what you did underneath. Really thin black outlines around the main shapes. I left the inside lines just as is and I didn't bother to outline those. I think that would have been too much. I present to you painting number two. What is this? I need to go to bed. When in doubt, draw wavy colorful lines and maybe add some drips. That's idea number two. Good morning, I have some chocolate chip pancakes. For the third painting, this one is called River Gemstone, so I thought it would be kind of cool to paint some crystals on here and use the name for inspiration. This time I have some paint brushes and tubes or bottles of acrylic paint. For the third one, I gathered as many tiny detailing paint brushes as I could along with all the colors that I wanted to work with. I was going to do blues but I decided that the purples and pinks were enough. So you can see here that I have an outline drawn. I did use Posca for this but it's just to do the guidelines. The rest is all acrylic paint and I am so happy I went with the decision to not use the Poscas anymore because the paint was so much more enjoyable it was more relaxing, it flowed so well, and it was so much more opaque. Uh, definitely 100% recommend, 110% use the paint on this instead. I guess I'm working on underpainting here, if you wanna call it that. So I'm just blocking in the different colors and shades of these purples and pinks where I think that they're going to look good. I think it's a good idea to practice painting gemstones and crystals because you can really play around with the highlights and shadows. The reflections that show up in quartz, they're so beautiful to look at and it is pretty forgiving because rocks look so different depending on just a little movement of light. So you can kind of fake the realisticness of it and Therefore, it won't make you want to pull your hair out if you're not doing it exactly right, quote unquote. This is pretty reminiscent of painting clouds, the highlights and shadows in clouds, because the ones up front are lighter and then they have that shadow behind them. But in order to get the shadow behind them to look more realistic, you want to put the shadow first and then paint the lighter color over that if that makes sense you could see what i was doing this one took two and a half hours i still have three left so the others i cannot spend this long on but i'm very happy with the way that it turned out look at it pretty i had a good idea while i was in the shower you're gonna have to deal with my wet hair because i dry it before i blow dry it i'm trying to be more time efficient especially with filming so i'm gonna do a five minute painting challenge i already started getting the paints ready otherwise i wouldn't even get anything painted on because it takes a while to get all the colors i'm going to put five minutes on my phone timer. This is probably going to be the best I can do with the placement of everything. Get a few more colors out. I already have black, but it's metallic. Okay. Whoa, a little too much. Oh, well, that's way too much too. All right, gotta hype myself up. <laughs> I'm nervous. All right, let's get five minutes on the clock. Okay, I can't breathe. Five minutes, go. All right, oh no, I don't like this already. Oh no, this is so messy. All right, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Contamination in the paint. Oh my gosh, it's already 30 seconds. A little bit of gold over here. Okay, this is not, not what I pictured at all. All right, let's get a different paintbrush for the white. I don't even think I'll get to all these colors. I'm feeling a little bit better about this now. Oh, you can't even see the time gotta choose another paintbrush. The black's supposed to be a shadow. We got three and a half minutes left. Shoot, that's a little shaky. <laughs> that's as good as it's gonna, oops, oops. Okay, that's actually fine. Let's do some gray down here. Oh no, that was bad. This is going by quick. All right, let's do this paintbrush. It's not as 
branchy as I thought it would be. It's not gonna fit in here. It's a little big. The star. Um, I have an edge in my ear. <laughs> uh, a little bit of a brown for the stemmy. Or not the stem. The trunk. Oh my gosh. Ornaments. Oh shoot, we'll do the dotting tool. Oh, they're too big. It's okay. Some turquoisey colors. 37 seconds. It's kind of blending in. Oh well. Oh no, I want some snow. Ah! Oh, 10. A little bit of shadow, a little bit of shadow. Oh no, oh no, no. <laughs> Shoot. No. I want some metallic black. Shoot! Okay. <laughs> Darn. Okay. So it doesn't have a table. <laughs> That's what we got. Now I have to wash all these brushes before lunch and blow drying. There she is. Here is, oh, it's glaring. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here is painting number four. It has a little bit of texture to it. Now there are only two left. I'm gonna go with Cepolino Bianco as the fifth painting. I think I wanna do something abstract, but no time limit this time. I went ahead and put this paint from the challenge inside a Ziploc bag so it didn't dry out. It kinda got messed up a little bit, but I'm gonna try to use as many of these colors as I can for this. For this one, I did not think that it was going to turn out the way that it ended up. So this is pretty cool to just go into a piece without much of an idea, just kind of what colors you're going to use, maybe what shapes you're going to use, but then randomly place them. So initially I thought that I was going to put that black circle, like I wanted to put rectangles around it and do more of a, I don't know, modern looking piece, which I guess it still does have kind of a modern abstract vibe. In my head though, I thought it was going to turn out more geometric and here you can see I just put a bunch of colorful splotches and some gray ones. Uh, the one in the middle I ended up putting gold over. I'm glad I made that choice. Once I had all these shapes and colors down, then the gears in my head were turning and I decided that the circles should actually be balloons. Yep, that is what I turned them into. Three black balloons. And the entire time I was doing this, once I decided that they looked like balloons instead or should be turned into them, I was thinking of the 99 Red Balloons song, even though they are black balloons. It's kind of eerie, but also gives you hope with all the colors, I guess and stars. You can wish upon a star that everything will be okay. Nothing bad is going on with the black balloons. I actually really like black balloons and decor and clothing, shoes. I personally don't think black is a very sad color. I think it's beautiful and I don't believe in the superstitions of black cats and and just black being for negative things. I think that this is beautiful. Here is painting number five. There's one left. This thing is too tall. It is now the next day and I'm about to start painting number six on Rice Lake. I don't think I'm gonna be painting rice though. Before I get into this, remember in the comment section below after I am finished to let me know which painting is your favorite out of the six that are going to be complete. Oh, my butt's sore from the bike. Here I am painting the basis for my idea and then I'm going to combine a different technique which you will see. For this next part, I was going to add water to my acrylic paint, but then I remembered I did a video on acrylic pour painting and this paint is a little bit more fluid. That eliminates a step, I'm pretty happy. I couldn't find any drinking straws, so I rolled one out of paper and taped it. What I'm gonna do is blow a few colors of paint and try to get a cool effect. Let's see if this works. Okay, let's do this. Oh my gosh, that's a big dot. It worked! Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> I don't like that it's so big of a blob, but I'm gonna try to make it work. I feel lightheaded. <laughs> also, I can barely breathe out of my nose, so that's probably why. Using a blow dryer may have been easier on my lungs and my head, but I think that might have been the wrong type of airflow, maybe a little bit too much. So I'm very happy I went with this 
technique. Ew, a fuzz. The fuzz is gone. So after the whoosh of color, it looks pretty cool. I went ahead and defined the paint tube a little bit more. I did not think of this until the very end, but the paint tube just looked way too plain. I obviously don't want to take away from the main focal point of the color burst, but I thought this would be a pretty fun opportunity to design my own paint brand. So I took the sound of my first initial, which is S, and added my middle name, Lynn. So that's the name of my paint brand, Esslin. It's so cute. I wish that this actually existed and hey, maybe someday it will. I don't have anything planned right now, but if you know a manufacturer, send them my way. Thanks. Yes, six. They're all finished now. I'm excited. I think this was a pretty good mix of different ideas. It definitely kept me entertained and I enjoyed every single painting. Will I do this again? I don't know. That depends on you. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out some of my other videos in the iCard and in the description box below. I'll see you guys very soon in my next video and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye. Or if it just scratches off and is a computer, why can't I speak? <laughs> Ow, that was rough.